Shillian forcefully rebuked. I know no one will come, but it's none of your shitty business. White, no face, asked languidly. Then why did you poke a hole to lay yourself in? Are you trying to get attention? No one will cry over you right now. Shillian countered. I'm doing this because I want to. It's none of your shitty business. If someone does come to help you, what will you do? And if no one comes to help you, what will you do? Shillian started cursing. Why are you so full of bullshit? I'm gonna throw up. It's none of your shitty business. None of your shitty business. His words were becoming more and more vulgar and rude, his tone more and more aggravated. But as much as he swore, he only knew so many words. White No Face seemed to be very amused as he laughed out loud. Then he sighed. Silly child. He turned around, just as well. Either way, there is only one day left. Letting you foolishly struggle a bit is fine. Either way, no one will come give you a single cup of water or help you pull out the black sword, remember? White No Face reminded him again. Tomorrow at sunset, if you still haven't unleashed the human face disease, the curse will fall upon you. Shillian listened quietly, moving not a limb. On the third day, Shillian still lay there in that deep human-shaped pit in the middle of the intersection. Not even his posture had changed. The crowd today wasn't too different from the crowd from the day before. They all detoured far away from him, going about their day. Although the incident with the strange man falling from the sky had been reported to the authorities, when the other party heard it could be the god of misfortune, that wasn't really causing any trouble, just lying there like a dead body. They didn't want to deal with it, and placated the affair with a vague, we'll observe for a few days. Who knew what would happen in a few days? Several curious children came running over, squatting by the edge of the pit to look at this man. They picked up a tree branch, secretly poking at him, but Shillian was like a dead fish without any reaction. They were amazed and wanted to throw something at him to see if that would elicit anything. But they were discovered by their parents and were harshly lectured before getting grounded at home. The water merchant from the day before was also still glancing in their direction. Shillian hadn't taken a single drop of water for a day and a night, and a layer of dried and withered dead skin formed on his lips. That little merchant felt sorry and ladled a bowl of water, seeming to want to deliver it. But his wife elbowed him, making him topple the bowl, and so he had to relent. Who knew if the heavens also wanted to join in on the fun, and after midday, drizzling rain began to fall from the sky. The vendors on the streets hurriedly packed up their stalls, and the pedestrians also shouted at each other to hurry home, and they all left hastily. After a while, that rain came pouring down harder and harder, and Shillian's face was scoured, appearing even more pale, and his entire body was soaked through. Soundlessly, the shadow of a white-clothed man appeared next to him. No one else on the street seemed to have noticed this peculiar figure. White No Face looked down on him condescendingly. The sun is about to set. Shillian was silent. You aren't the god of misfortune, but they would rather believe that you are, unwilling to believe that you aren't, White No Face said. Once upon a time, you defied the heavens, and created rain for young An, yet now they won't even donate a cup of water to you. To pierce you with a hundred swords might have been done out of desperation, but now they're not even willing to do something simple, like helping you pull out a sword. They all found the task too difficult. 
he said piteously. I've told you this before. No one will come help you. There was a voice screaming hysterically in Shirlian's heart. Admit it. What he said is right. There isn't, there isn't, there isn't. There really isn't. There isn't a single person. As if he had heard this desperate cry in Shelian's heart, White Snow Face seemed to have smiled a bit. He reached out and gripped the hilt of that black sword. But it's all right. They won't help you, but I will help you. Then he exerted some force, lifted his hand, and pulled that black sword from Shelian's abdomen. Tossing it aside next to Shelian, with a sounding clang. Soon after, that shadow of white cloth in the rain laughed lightly as if he had succeeded. Then he backed away, leaving Shillian to his own devices and vanished. After having that black sword pulled out, Shillian's wound was exposed without cover and so to be battered by the rain, the already numbed pain started spreading once again. However, this was the only thing he could clearly feel at this moment. Splash, splash, there came the sound of a series of wild footsteps stomping on water, like there was a pedestrian who was rushing over in the rain. However, Shillian wasn't secretly hopeful like before. He sat up slowly, yet unexpectedly, just as he got up, there was a loud yell and a man fell heavily next to him. That man carried a large basket on his back and wore a bamboo hat for shielding against the rain. It was probably due to the pouring rain that he hadn't seen that there was someone in the pit on the road. And only when he had gotten closer and Shillian suddenly sat up did he notice. Plus, the man was running really fast and so to forcibly stop, this tripping fall was quite heavy. As he tumbled and lay sprawled next to that human-shaped pit, he instantly started loudly swearing on the spot. What the fuck? His bamboo hat had flown off, the basket on his back was toppled, and the white rice spilled all over the ground. That man sat on the ground and screamed in frustration, slapping down at the ground, and the wet mud and rice splattered on Shillian's face. The man was outraged, jumping three feet in the air and pointed at Shillian squarely in the face. What the hell? This ancestor worked his ass off to earn a bit of money, to buy a bit of rice, and now it's all gone just like that. How many lifetimes worth of bloody bad luck is this? Pay me back. Don't sit there pretending to be dead. Pay me back. Shillian didn't bother to spare him a look at all and planned to ignore him. However, that man was unrelenting, and he pulled Shillian up by the collar. Are you asking for your death? Huh? I'm talking to you. Yes, Shillian replied coldly. That man clicked his tongue. Well, if you want to f***ing die, go scamper off to the side, and die on your own quietly. What are you doing blocking people's way in the middle of the road? Can't even die in peace. What a nuisance. Shillian let himself be shaken wildly by the collar, stoic and expressionless, exceedingly numb. Curse. Curse all you want. Nothing matters anymore. So just curse however you want. Either way, everything will soon disappear. The sun was about to set. That man gripped the wooden Shillian, pressing to have Shillian pay him back. And when Shillian didn't respond, He cursed to his heart's content, but he still wasn't appeased. Only after having pushed and shoved for a long while did he pick up his bamboo hat on the ground, put it on his head, and walked away grumbling. Shillian was thrown back into the pit with a dull thud, and gradually he began to hear a clamoring noise louder than the sound of rain. It was the shrieking of the millions of souls of the dead sealed within the black sword. Along with the setting sun sinking bit by bit down the west, 
They started hollering and wailing like mad inside Shirian's head, cheering and rejoicing for the coming arrival of their freedom and revenge. Shirian raised a hand and covered his face. Just as his other hand was shakily reaching out to grab hold of that black sword on the ground, he suddenly noticed something strange. The rain seemed to have stopped. No, the rain didn't stop. It was something that was placed over his head, helping him block off that pouring rain. Shilin whipped his head up to look and saw someone crouched before him, pressing that bamboo hat that was on his own head on Shilin's head. It was that man who was just cursing loudly at him. He glared at the other and the other also glared back at him. What are you looking at me like that for? What? It was just some cursing, and you really want to go die over it? He spat on the ground as he spoke, looking so miserable like you're crying for the dead. How unlucky. The man was savage and aggressive earlier, and now, thinking back on it, he seemed to feel a little guilty. After grumbling, he started trying to explain himself. All right, all right. It was my bad earlier, but you deserved all of that scolding. Who told you to go all mental? Besides, who's never been cursed at before? Shilin's eyes were round and bulging, unable to speak. Then, that man grew impatient. Fine, 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 fine. It's my bad luck today. You don't have to pay back that rice. What are you doing still lying around here for? You're a grown man, not a child. Are you waiting for your ma and pa to pick you up? Get up, get up, get up, get up, he urged as he pulled and yanked, pulling Shillian up and forcefully slapping him twice on the back. Stand up, go home now. And so Shillian was pulled out of this human-shaped pit just like that and almost tumbled to the ground by those two slaps, feeling dumbfounded. When he snapped out of it, that man had already gone. What remained was only the bamboo hat still on his head, reminding him. He was just pulled out by someone. It wasn't a hallucination. Who knows how much time had passed and why Snow Face reappeared behind him. This time he didn't smile and his voice wasn't that easy and carefree anymore, but rather vaguely displeased and worried. What are you doing? The rain was still pouring down, but Shilin was wearing a bamboo hat given to him by someone. So while his body was already drenched, at least his head and face were now spared. But still, his cheeks were wet. Seeing that Shilin wasn't answering, White No Face added darkly, The sun is about to set. Take up your sword. Otherwise, you know what will happen. Shilin didn't turn his head back and only said softly, Fuck you. What did you say? White No Face's voice carried a trace of frost. Shilin turned to him and said calmly, Did you not hear me? Then I'll say it again. Suddenly, his leg flew out violently, thunderously kicking out, sending White No Face flying meters away. His foot stomped down. Shilin held his wound with one hand, while the other pointed in the direction where White No Face had gone. He used his loudest voice, giving everything he had to yell. I said, fuck you. Who do you think you are? To dare to talk to me like this? I am the crown prince. Upon his face, two lines of tears were already streaming down from his eyes. One person. Just one. Really, just one person was enough.